Welcome to Let's Clone, my name would be Stephen French, and this is part three of Snake. This might be the last part, but as I mentioned before, if anybody wants to see how to make a local saved high score list or a online saved high score list, I could add a part four to this to teach that, or I might do that as a, a standalone video. Either way, part three of Snake, we're gonna be adding in our start buttons so we can start the game at three different speeds. Change this all you want, however you want. And, uh, uh, that's pretty much it that oh and uh, to keep not a local to machine storing of the game the best score so far but just uh within your single play time if you were to reset the game or if you die i want to retain that high score we're going to do that today so the buttons can be pretty simple there's as you can see only two events a create event and a step event and then we're going to do a little bit of creation code which is done in the game editor we can add a little bit of code that will overwrite the create event and give us the particular variables that we need uh, yeah, two events, let's get started. I have drawn up a very simple button that I'm going to replace with this even more simple button. Um, if you'd like to try, draw up your own, do that. If you want the one that I made for this, it'll be probably in the description. Uh, but I'm going to click on where's my buttons and the snake button. You'll see the animation later. I did want to go down here and change. Well, I guess you can see the animation now. It just looks like Snake walking around. We're going to have a different speed for each one that we need. But I did want to change its origin point to middle center, just so it's easier for me to line up in the game room when we place it. So the create event. Very, very simple. Let me just make this... Oh no, I just wasn't in the right spot. I don't know how readable everything is, so... I'm trying to help out. So all we need to do is uh, don't cycle the sprites, which that was actually for the old image, so... I kind of want to get rid of that because we are going to cycle the sprites. We kind of have to now. Um, and then we're going to hold game speed variable. That one we still need to do. So that, oh, we just game speed is equal to default 10. Or actually, we'll default, yeah, we'll default 10. That is the normal speed we've been playing. This is the same variable that will be passed into the system event, which is the same variable that the player will then look at from the system event and use that to run the alarm that clicks his speed. So we're going to be able to set this at the start of the game and it should work just fine. But that is all we need for that. Now this will be a little bit different because again, now I've added a uh, button with animation. So I'm gonna get to ignore some of it. Uh, that's why we would normally default the sprite to the first image because we are gonna cycle through it. We're not gonna do that. Image two, if the mouse is over, we're not gonna do that. And the last image, if the mouse is pressed, we're not gonna do that. But we are going to do on release, set the speed and change to room. <laughs> so if we're going to do if I think I did it as a position meeting, yes. Um, position meeting at mouse x, mouse, ooh, mo mouse, mouse y, uh, id or self, id. So that just means that if the mouse is over that player image, um, we're actually gonna do something. We're gonna do a highlight, uh, is equal to false. Well, this will make sense in a little bit. We're gonna kind of do what I did in the other code. So we're gonna do highlight is equal to false, but if you are mousing over, we're gonna do highlight is equal to true. We'll take care of this in this event's draw event. So we're gonna create one more thing for that. Then we're gonna say if, is it mouse? Yeah, mouse check button. I actually would like the button released. So what this does is checks after we've didn't do that after we've clicked the uh, left mouse button when the mouse button is released or release. Now it knows that it's the left button to look for. So for release, we're gonna go go to room. Oh no, it's this is easier. We'll do room go to next, and that's gonna bring us from our start screen, which we don't have yet into our main room. Uh, we're gonna have to go back and change a couple things like when the player wins or dies because we wanna go back to room start instead of the game restart that we have done before. Um, okay, for now we're gonna ignore the highlight. We're gonna come back to this when we get everything up and running. We're gonna need to go into rooms and I would just duplicate this room, but we're gonna call it room start. And we need it to be on top. So that way it is the room that, that renders first. Uh, we do we do want to have no, we do want to put our uh, our boy there 
because we want him to not be alive in this room. He's gonna, he has, and by our board, I mean our, uh, our system event. If you go into the workspace and look at the system event, make sure that persistent is ticked right here. What that means is that since he's in this room and we do a, like a new room go to next, we're gonna carry that object along with us. And then when we die, if we send ourselves back to this room, we're gonna carry that same object around with us. It's going to allow for pretty much, it'll show our, our best score even when we're on the main screen and it'll show both scores when we're on the regular screen. But that's good enough. Now room start, we're gonna come down here to, where's my, where's my button? Oh, here's my button. I'm gonna want three of these buttons. Uh, you can almost see the outline of it, but you see there's a 32 by 32. What is my six for this? We're gonna be 320. All right, so now I know that I can lock into the center. Let's go center middle for the first one. All right, so we have three objects in the room. What we need to do is if you double click, go down to creation code. In the creation code, we're gonna set the game speed manually. Game speed is equal to, we'll do 15. This will be the slow one. By having a game speed set to 15, that means that every 15 frames, we will allow for movement uh, down the grid. So if this number is smaller, then it would happen more times because it would it would trigger in fewer frames. So we're gonna have the game speed, speed we're gonna set that to 15. Since this is the slowest one, we're gonna say image speed is equal to 0.2. I haven't found numbers that correlate to the speed of the game yet. I should have thought that through. But we're gonna set the game speed and we're gonna set the, uh, the image speed. So now this is gonna be our default game. We've already set that by default to 10, but I'm gonna do it here anyways. Since this is the normal speed, we're gonna set it, I don't know, 0.6. I have no idea how fast these are gonna be. Then we'll take the third one, creation code, same thing, but this is going to be five and we're just gonna to go to one. We're, we're gonna see, we'll, we'll play this one together. I made noopsie. Um, in our step event, Definitely forgot to do something. So we need to not only go to the next room, but first we need to set system dot game speed equal to game speed. So we were passing that object over to the system object or that variable over to the system object. You, you get it, you get it, cool. Awesome. Now you could run an alarm to pass to these. So every alarm, every step at that same increment, then it moves by one pixel or one frame or one image index. And that'll look at the same exact speed as the snake. Play around with that if you want. I'm just gonna do this for now. Uh, we've got fast, medium, and slow. It'll be a little easier to click, a little easier to identify in a second. Unable to find any instance of object index one named system. Well, that's my room main. I deleted the wrong one. Somehow I ended up deleting the one from main while I was telling you to delete the one from the start. This is all over the place. In the start menu, add your system object. In your main menu, delete that system object. Oh, it might have been confusing, my bad. Good, but now we got the three different snakes. We can click and there is the medium speed. We can click and there's the fast speed. We can click and there is the slow speed. Now to make the button look a little better, this I'm just kind of doing on a whim. I just wanted to come down into the draw event. Uh, draw slash highlight play. So we're going to draw set color, which I just like using the European version of that, to see dark gray. Oh, we might do a light gray. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. And then actually we're going to do this. Can you, we're gonna see if this works. An inline, what is this called? An inline operator, I think. So we're gonna check the highlight variable, uh, the question mark, the question marker operator. So if highlight is true, then it's going to give us a C line. This is how it has worked. It works like an inline if statement. Uh, we're gonna declare or have a Boolean or our expression uh, first. In this case, it's highlight. It's either set to true or false, so zero or one. If it is positive, then we want to run the highlight, which will be our first option 
here. So if true, we're gonna run C lime. If false, we're gonna run C dark gray. Just a tight way to put all that code into one line. And then we're going to draw set horizontal align to uh, center. We're going to draw set vertical align also to center. And we're going to draw text at x, y, um, the word play. If ever you create a draw event, you have to first draw yourself because it overwrites the default draw event entirely, as far as I'm aware. So draw yourself and then draw all the, all the other shit. So it says play, it's circling around the play. I can highlight it and why is it a little flash? That's interesting. I'm gonna leave it, I kinda like it because it kinda highlights it, I guess. But yeah, we can circle around it. So I actually, we could even pass it over. Let's do this, let's do this. Um, Instead of passing it here, we're going to say title. We're going to come on down to our create, and we're going to say title is equal to play. So it, it's not going to actually show that. We're going to come back into our room start. Let's see some creation code. Title is equal to uh, top one that's 15, so slow. Slow worm. We're gonna have title is equal to normal bug. And our third one is going to be title is equal to speedy snake. And then with the mouth with the mouth with the power of voila. Oh shit. <laughs> With the power of an oops mixed with a voila, we now have our slow worm, our normal bug, or our speedy snake. Now let's quickly finish up that high score bockery. So we're gonna come down into our step event here, I believe it was. That text is like way too big for me. Uh, da, 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 that's spawning, oh, right here. So here we did a game restart when we collide with ourselves or with a, a wall. Well, instead we're gonna say room, Go to, I didn't need that, room start. This is in our player step event. We're going to go into, I don't know if here, nope, I think the other, only other place that we were concerned with this is in the system event when we win. So in our step, check for victory. Here we also do a game restart. So instead again, room go to, but you're never going to see the screen because it's goddamn hard. Uh, room. So let me click it and start. Let's try again and see if dying retains our best score. I'm gonna I'm a normal kind of bug. So I'm just gonna get a couple points so we can uh, verify it as we beat it again. So I'm at three. And I'm gonna test out with colliding into myself first. That worked. So this was always kind of interesting for me when I did uh, did this with the other one. You could see the game in the background. I didn't have these little icons in front of it, so it didn't look as obscure. Now I'm thinking it actually looks pretty bad, but we have a best score of four. We're gonna come into a new game, this one a fast one. See if, what happens if we die with the score under it. Still best score of four. Let's see what happens if we beat it. I have the mouse, whoa, right on the screen, and that always, okay. I was distracted by the mouse. Normal score. What happens if we beat our score of four? Ah, well, we already know it's gonna work. I mean, I didn't edit it out, so it probably worked. Come on. Bang, there we go. You got Snake. I'm gonna play to see how far I can get on this one. Decent run, I guess. 
made a couple little changes to the sprites. I filled in the middle, added tile segments to them, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. We've got the three. They move somewhat. It looks kind of like the speeds, at least close enough. You get the point. Uh, the speedy snake, a regular snake, or nope, speedy snake, a normal bug, and a slow worm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Took a little more time than I was thinking, but that is all of part three of Snake. For as far as gameplay and menu goes, Snake is done. Again, let me know if you want to see anything about uh, adding an online or local leaderboard. I've got Pac-Man in the works. It is almost done being written. I've got some time, because I've got these two episodes, I still have this in the last episode I still have to release. So I'm going to finish up Pac-Man and start recording some of those before this one even comes out. So, uh... Yeah, some content should be on schedule. I'm going to try to release Tuesdays and Thursdays afternoon on uh, Eastern Time. I usually get home when I'm at my dad's working around like 6 or 7, 5 or 6 sometimes. So I'll probably be releasing around like between 6 and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesdays and Thursdays for as long as I can manage it. Thank you so much for being here. Snake is done. Let's Clone is done for now. See you in the next one.